A tank is shaped like an upside down pyramid. It is 10 meters tall. Fine. And its base is a square of side length 5. Also fine. It is full to the brim with liquid, having density 1450 kilograms per meter cubed. Okay, so it's filled to the brim. Let X be the depth of the tank. It is zero at the top, it's supposed to say top, and 10 meters at the bottom. So you could label out something like this. Here, X equals zero, and here, X equals 10. First task is to write down a formula for the area of the cross section, A of X, as a function of depth. In other words, there's a square you could make out of layers of the liquid in this container. It might look something like that. And that square shrinks as you go from here to here. I've picked an arbitrary point in the middle, a distance of x, or rather um, existing at a depth of x. We're supposed to write down the formula for the area of this particular square as you go from top to bottom. So we should get a function that shrinks with larger x and that has a domain from 0 to 10. The particular problem that I've been shown here then goes on to say, write a definite integral, but do not solve it. That computes the total mass of the liquid in the tank. The purpose of this problem is to show us that we can make a formula for the cross-section of something, build out its volume using an integral of those respective cross-sections, and then use that to compute something like mass as it relates to density, which is why they gave us this earlier. But we're going to need to, to go in the order that they specified. Let's write down a formula for the area of the cross section. And in order to do that, we need to find a way to relate the variable of interest, the depth of the tank, somehow to the area of the square that's at that depth. It takes practice to recognize exactly what governing geometric equations you're supposed to use, okay? And this video is not pro probably not going to serve as the be-all and end-all of, of how to figure that out. But if you're being introduced to this topic for the first time, what I want to offer up is a side-on view of this tank. It would look like a triangle. Along with that, I might be able to notice my square or at least a thin slab where my square is. Remember, it's a distance of x down from the top of the tank. All right, so look, the dimensions are still the dimensions. There's still 10 here, and there's still five here. But if we go from x equals zero to x equals 10, we could talk about the height of this smaller triangle. If we go down a distance of x, then it stands to reason that the height of this triangle is 10 minus x. At this point, to make things simple, what I'd like to do is offer up a similar triangle's uh, line of thought. Consider that triangle and this red one. The uh, leg length of this red one will be um, 5 over 2. 2.5, half, half of 5. Finally, let me offer up a label for the side length of the smaller blue triangle, because that can be written in terms of the side length of the square of interest, if you think about it. In fact, it's half of that side length. I could say s over 2, but my s's kind of look like 5's, and that might cause trouble. So instead, I'm going to use d, d over 2, as a variable for the um, side length of my blue triangle. And now, set up a similar triangle's proportion. It should be true that the sides are in proportion. Obviously, they're similar triangles. D over 2, as related to 5 over 2, should be equal to 10 minus x over 10. And then if I take a moment to simplify that, and try and get the side length d by itself, something interesting should happen. So let's see here. We have d over 5. Cross multiply the 5. That's going to become 1 half. I'm going to have d equals 10 minus x over 2. 
or if you prefer, d equals 5 minus 1 half x, where d is the side length. We'll establish that now and write it down so we don't forget. This is a function of the side length as a function of the depth, x. And if we have the side length of a square, it shouldn't be too hard to find the area of a square, right? The cross-sectional area, a of x, the area of a square is side squared. In terms of our variable, we have d squared. But d, we just learned, is 5 minus 1 half x. So with that, we've actually done the first thing that the problems ask us to do. A of x is equal to 5 minus 1 half x squared. So then the problem asks us to tackle an integral building problem. Write a definite integral. Don't solve it for some reason. But that computes the total mass of the liquid in the tank. Now we're going to take advantage of another relationship that governs our thinking here. We know that density, rho, is equal to mass divided by volume. So it stands to reason that mass is equal to density times volume. I'll put that in a different color to signify that we're in a different mode of thought now, slightly. So we know the density. That's given up here. But we don't really know the volume. So what is the volume of this? Well, we're going to use the cross-sectional area to figure it out. Think of the pyramid here as being a stack of constantly changing squares. If we sum all of those squares together, you would have a volume. You would have a two-dimensional shape with a thickness that varies as x goes from 0 to 10. I have other videos that dive a little bit more into the development of that. But here, what we're going to do to talk about the volume as a function of x is simply integrate from where the depth is x equals 0 to where the depth is x equals 10 of the cross-sectional area, 5 minus 1 half x squared dx, dx being the infinitesimal thickness of that, the thing that actually allows us to treat that uh, quote-unquote flat thing as something that has actual thickness. And we sum up all those infinitesimally thick slabs and we get our shape. So there's your volume. All right, so if you want to talk about your mass as a function of x, multiply this volume expression, which is an unsolved in integral like they specified, by the density. 1450 kilograms per meter cubed times the integral from 0 to 10 of 5 minus 1 half x squared dx. And honestly, that's not even too difficult an integral. So we'll take care of that when I get myself some extra space here. This integral can be solved fairly easily with u substitution. If I choose to let u be equal to 5 minus 1 half x, then du dx will be 0 minus 1 half. Then du will be negative 1 half dx, and dx will be negative 2 du. The substitution worked perfectly. We wish they all worked out like that. So if I want to evaluate my integral, I can just go, say, 1450 integral, remember, from x equals 0 to x equals 10, of u times negative 2 du. Factor out the constant, and we have 2 times 1450. I think that's going to be 2900, negative 2900. An integral from x equals 0 to x equals 10 of u du, very straightforward, negative 2900. The indefinite integral will be one-half u to the second power. And we have to evaluate that from x equals 0 to x equals 10. This is the point at which we put our substitution back. Negative 2,900, one-half, remember, of 5 
minus 1 half x squared. And then that's what we said that u really was in terms of x. And now we can put these limits back as 0 to 10 and substitute. I'll uh, not go through the numerical calculation from here. It turns out that the result is positive 3,600, sorry, 36,000 rather, 250 kilograms. And I say kilograms because if you recall, that was the mass of our liquid that we were being asked about, where the density was given in kilograms per meter cubed and the dimensions were in meters. Okay, that's it for this one. Hope that helped.